Have you ever had a hard time choosing which phone to purchase? We all see different specs on various devices. But aside from choosing what phone suits the kind of lifestyle we have, we also take its design into consideration. Welcome to The Bestest, the channel that provides you the bestest news and videos you should know about. In today's episode, we'll discuss the worst handphone designs ever made. Before we start, please make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to get notifications of our videos. The Bestest is all about summarizing the bestest of everything you can find on the internet. And in today's episode, is all about the worst phone designs you wouldn't even want to use. Yes, we understand the need for a phone, the convenience it brings into our life, but we're pretty sure you wouldn't want to get caught with a phone that's on this list. But well, maybe some of you would. Ha! <laughs> Got <he. laughs> So at number 10, we have Nokia Engage. We all know Nokia for its highly durable devices, but these devices are not entirely something that's always aesthetically pleasing. Or maybe we're just not the right market for a Nintendo Game Boy Advance with a hybrid Symbian-based phone. It was a brave and bold attempt, which also has its own gaming system. However, the price for the Nokia Engage was thrice more than the Nintendo's Game Boy Advance. Its awkward button layout and tall aspect ratio made games like Sonic and less enjoyable. Aside from that, only six games were launched for this device. Taking calls isn't a picnic with this phone either, as its speaker and earpiece was placed on top of the Nokia Engage's edge. As if the Nokia Engage wasn't enough, Nokia launched Engage QD, which miraculously wasn't so bad at all, but they still weren't able to achieve their sales target. But we do have to commend Nokia's attempt at their own version of a gaming phone. Their attempt truly symbolized the public's interest in mobile gaming. Even though others would prefer to play using computers and laptops, the thought also being able to play games in your phone is somehow appealing. Stick around to find more phones you might be more interested in rather than the current trends from Apple and Samsung. Plus, the last phone we're highlighting in this video will shock you. At number 9, we have the Kaisera Echo. We believe this phone will be loved by people who multitask a lot, but its bulky hardware, weak battery life, and even a poorly optimized software makes you think it'd be incapable of functioning smoothly. That's where we're wrong. It had a secondary screen that folded outward on a hinge, letting users run two apps simultaneously. The dual screen dedicated to Kaisera Echo allowed users to type on one screen without covering up the other, and stretch out individual apps to cover both displays. Kaisera Echo was an amazing idea but with its own fundamental problems. And these weren't all just about the technology that was applied, but more on the fact that its foldable display is something that isn't easily mastered and perfected. And this next phone was Motorola's bold attempt which comes in at number 8, called the Motorola Flipout. This company was among the ones that weren't fully persuaded by the fact that smartphones should come in rounded rectangular shapes. And that's how they got the idea for a square-shaped phone with a screen which swiveled out to reveal a physical keyboard. It felt like using a collapsible BlackBerry. The Motorola Flipout, which was released in 2010, had a dinky 2.8-inch screen, just to make using an Android system possible. However, Motorola's Moto Blur user interface somehow takes the cake in how this phone made it to the worst headphone designs ever. Although it may seem like everything about this is a bunch of red flags, there is one thing that truly makes it interesting. Before the rise of front cameras, this phone had a mirror which makes taking phones of yourself easier. And at number 7 is where the LG 1010 is. 
At first glance, this looks like such a cute phone, but its cuteness is only something that's brought about due to its size. This is a design that makes us wonder why LG ever even made something like this. With a display made out of plastic, it wasn't that durable, which makes this among the most fragile phones you might reconsider purchasing. Aside from that, its small size also makes all of its buttons small, which makes its overall functionality even become a more horrible experience. As if dropping it was not enough, this phone also has a few service problems. One user stated that once, this phone somehow and mysteriously goes out of service. It means permanently. That's not all. It also has a weaker battery compared to the oldest iPhone versions. A toy car could function for longer hours compared to the LG 1010. And we thought we had seen the end of Motorola's attempt at luxury, but no. Because at number 6 is the Motorola Aura R1. Its cool name obviously shows overcompensation for the overall design and functionality of this phone. The Motorola R R1 is another attempt for Motorola to show how smartphones could also come in the shape of an elongated oblong. Starting with that, they also thought that having a round display would help give this device its own style and aesthetic. However, it was terrible at displaying anything with corners. Although it did have a small window where you could see the gears rotated when you swivel it open. Now that's kind of cool, but not cool enough to persuade most of the people out of the rounded, rectangular smartphone designs. And at number 5 is the BlackBerry Passport. This handy device from BlackBerry is indeed considered the shortest and widest phone ever made. Its wideness made it challenging to handle with only one hand. Furthermore, it also has a 4.5-inch square-shaped touchscreen, which wasn't really compatible with a lot of applications. The display limited the phone's overall functionality. BlackBerry Passport also had a system that was prone to lag, making it a somehow slow phone. This also raised a lot of complaints to users and buyers since this phone was very expensive. There may be a lot of problems with its display and its overall functionality, but due to its wide size, this also gave room for a longer lasting battery life. So, if you stayed with us this far into this episode, which phone had the most interesting feature but also the worst design? The phones we have presented so far did give us a look into what phones looked like before we decided to stick with the usual Samsung and Apple phones. And don't worry, the bestest isn't done showing the other bad phone designs which will make you thank your parents for being bored into this century instead. And if you thought you'd seen the last of Nokia, you're wrong. Since at number 4, we can see another design idea gone wrong in the Nokia 7280. Others would have thought this device was an Art Deco inspired lipstick rather than a phone. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Nokia did make a few changes with the Nokia 7280. Changes such as replacing the keyboard with a rotary dial instead. This makes it look like a Walkman or maybe even just a weirdly shaped remote. The concept was certainly appealing, but the absence of a physical keyboard was also its demise. Navigating through the phone, composing messages, and searching for specific contacts was a huge wall the Nokia 7280's rotary dial couldn't climb. We do understand how phones before could cost a fortune. But Siren Labs' Solarin takes the cake for most expensive phone with a really bad design at number 3. The Solarin is an Android phone priced at $13,000. What? It was also covered in a weird carbon leather weave which also had a diamond switch. This highly expensive and luxurious diamond switch functions to activate a phone shielded privacy mode. Siren Labs claim that this switch makes all of your communications unhackable. Solarin makes you feel like you have your own personal cybersecurity team on call. 
This was the feature they repeatedly highlighted due to its military-grade defenses against cybercrime, which they claim to be the perfect defense for the luxury. And believe it or not, the Solarin has 4 gigabytes worth of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. Its overall functionality is average, but it had an interface which isn't really very user-friendly. And at number 2, we have another design from LG called the LG Double Play. LG also came on board on all the attempts to try and achieve a successful version of dual screen devices. This resulted in a phone called the LG Double Play, although its second screen wasn't really very helpful as it only served as an application tray which also spits the physical keyboard in half. Aside from that, it had a thick slider especially when closed. Okay. It had a bulky overall design which not a lot of people loved. Typing messages was also a hassle due to the split keyboard. This attempt at a dual screen was only successful in doing one thing, and that's draining the battery at an even faster rate. Who would have thought that batteries were already an issue before the rise of our current devices? Nonetheless, we are almost at the end of this countdown. And now, the phone we've all been waiting for. Oh my god! Wow! At number one, we have the Toshiba G450. The lozenge-shaped phone comes with a round display at the top. It's shaped like a lozenge, but also feels like a remote. In addition to its awkward design, it also has a keyboard which is widely spread two circles below its display. Despite this phone being released in 2011, it doesn't really look like something that's from this century. And you'd hate this phone since it does not have a camera at all. Although it also functions as an MP3 player as well as a flash drive. People who developed this might have thought that the flash drive function will distract you from the device's lack in camera features. Well, that sums up everything in the bestest episode for the worst handphone designs ever. <laughs> <laughs> who would have thought such designs existed until now? But if given the chance, maybe if some of these products were discontinued, it would somehow be a great first phone gift to the youth of today. However, there were interesting concepts that maybe these companies are willing to try again in the future. So what phone design kept you interested among those mentioned in this episode? Let us know in the comment section below. Make sure to like and subscribe to The Bestest and hit the bell to access more of our videos. Thank you so much for watching and until our next Bestest video.